It was just past midnight in the hilly scrubland outside South Africa's Pelindaba Nuclear Research Facility, the former site of the apartheid government's secret nuclear weapons program. Inside its electric fences, a vault holds the legacy of South Africa's nuclear past, a cache of highly enriched uranium and enough to build six nuclear warheads. That night in November 2007, four gunmen breached chain perimeter fencing and slipped inside. One of them disabled a 10,000-volt electrified barrier, circumventing a magnetic anti-tamper device to do so. Simultaneously, a second group broke through the perimeter further west. For 20 minutes, they roamed the facility until discovered by a civilian visitor who was shot as the gunman fled. South African officials who investigated the break-in dismissed it as a routine burglary. No enriched uranium was stolen. The government has refused to speculate on the motives of the intruders, all of whom escaped. Fortunately, they didn't succeed, but what it showed is that even a facility that was supposed to be very well guarded was vulnerable. The International Atomic Energy Agency states that more than a hundred nuclear and radiological incidents happen a year. It is absolutely not just a South Africa issue. A nuclear security incident in one country can lead to a nuclear terrorist event in other parts of the world. There are four faces of nuclear terrorism. One, terrorists could acquire through theft or purchase a nuclear device. Second, they could build a nuclear device using highly enriched uranium or plutonium. Three, they could sabotage a nuclear power plant. And four, they could create a dirty bomb with a conventional explosive surrounded by radiological materials. They'd have different levels of consequence, but we gotta worry about all of them. In 2010, President Barack Obama launched a series of nuclear security summits. As a consequence of the work that's been done collectively, 12 countries and two dozen nuclear facilities around the world have rid themselves entirely of highly enriched uranium and plutonium. Dozens of nations have boosted security at their nuclear storage sites, built their own counter-smuggling teams, or created new centers to improve nuclear security and training. The Nuclear Security Summit process has been an important initiative by the Obama administration, um, but it hasn't been completely sufficient. It really hasn't addressed the overall governance. How are we going to deal with the rules and regulations of nuclear security on a global basis? Transparency. How do we get confidence that country X is performing their nuclear security as adequately as country Y? Those are all continuing problems. The nuclear security summit process to date has focused primarily on the possible theft of material. Only recently has it addressed the risk of radiological terrorism or reactor sabotage. And it explicitly does not address the 85% of nuclear materials in the military sector. It's really important for our leaders to talk about how they can strengthen the security of military materials and to do it in a way where there's accountability, transparency, and confidence building among states. A major concern is the highly dispersed former Soviet stockpile. During the 1990s, the US and Russia cooperated to account for and reduce this threat. But some material may have leaked out. There has been a string of concerning incidents traced to a Moldovan smuggling ring. This criminal group may have access to a larger stash, and they have shown no hesitation about marketing to Islamic militants like ISIS or Al-Qaeda, whose use of these weapons would be catastrophic. The amount of nuclear weapon material is growing and growing significantly. We know that there's material out there and we know that people are trying to get it. Nuclear material security is everyone's responsibility. You have power to influence your local decision makers, your national leaders. We all have an equity in this. This is the responsibility of all leaders everywhere.